Ich muss gar nicht warten, Herr Böckchen. Ich werde am Ende für Sie da jetzt sagen. Am Ende kriege ich, aber ich muss das sagen, das Lost Call zu sagen. Die andere Mystery, weil wir nicht glauben, aber die andere Mystery, sie hat über die letzten paar Jahre für Charity gegangen, sie hat das Summit von Mount Kenya, das zweite Haus Mount Kenya, in 2011, dann hat sie das höchste Haus in Afrika gegangen, dann hat sie das höchste Haus in Afrika gegangen, dann hat sie das höchste Haus in Afrika gegangen, in the African continent, the Uhuru Peak on Mount Kilimanjaro. And, in, and then in last year, she reached the base camp, no, 2014, the base camp in Mpuma, um of, is that? I don't, I don't know where it is, but I don't want to <laughs> And then finally, she went back. She wasn't, she hadn't enough. She climbed the summit of Kilimanjaro again in 2015. So now you know what I mean, Thunder. I know that was a long introduction, but you really deserve it. And nice to have you with us. Thank you, Michael, for that uh, uh, fascinating and emotional for you. I'm sorry that I made you the emotional introduction. Um, but Michael and I come a long way, as he said. Um, in 2001, when I got the phone call from Michael that said, uh, Tandy, I'd like you to serve on my board. I was like, oh, yeah, this serious guy. <laughs> <laughs> like a girl, you know, being approached by the most handsome guy in the class. You know how you feel. <laughs> that uh, if you think I'm an inspiration to you, you really are an inspiration. When I speak to young people who are developing businesses, I ask them to link themselves with people uh, of, of the highest degree of ethics, morality, good leadership, good governance, and you always come up in my speeches. So thank you very much for being that guiding light. In the next 10 to 12 minutes, I, I want to give you a narrative that I've decided to call activism for self-fulfillment and pursuit of social justice. Because I just, when I look at my life, I, I just feel that maybe this activism was in pursuit, yes, of social justice in the end, but there was always this inner feeling in me to get personally fulfilled. And a very good friend of mine, <coughs> I haven't met her, but I read her books, because I love reading books, Ayala. Ayala talks about the fact that if you're not self-fulfilled, you cannot even think of helping the next person. Your cup must overflow so that you can share with others. If your cup <coughs> is half empty, how can you even think of sharing it? So I suppose if I look at my life, what I've done has really been an attempt to be self-fulfilled and to have this abundance so that I can share it with other people. So bear that in mind. But I'm telling you this because I want to go back to what is contained in my book. And it is about a mantra that I developed as a young girl. And if you don't have a mantra, you're sitting in this room today, please go home and think hard about mantra. What, what is it that I want to do? What is it that I want to leave as my legacy? Because you can't just be on this earth to be an oxygen thief. You call that oxygen thief. So my mantra, mantra is really around living each and every day as if it were my last. And it's longer than most mantras because I want to incorporate all the things I want. And the next thing I say in my mantra is that I want to touch each soul that I encounter every day of my life. As I walk through the journey of life, each soul that I encounter I should touch. Each one of us has got a very good excuse why we are underperforming or we're depressed or so and so is a problem I'm at the space because you know I could have been elsewhere were it not for my immediate supervisor were it not for so and so we in South Africa the tragedy is that this beautiful country which has got such tremendous potential has engulfed all of us in a negative negative vibe and individuals in society have ceased to take control of their lives so I'm challenging each one of you. Go back, get control of your life, determine for yourself what legacy do you want to leave. I climbed mountains as, as 
Michael has said. And it's amazing how as you journey through these mountains, and Maya knows she's also been, by the way, she's also a non-exec director, has also been to the top of Kilimanjaro, except she used some crazy route. I used, <laughs> I used the easy route. But as you climb the mountain, and I challenge each one of you, think about your own mountain, physical and spiritual. As you climb the mountain, I mean, you're sitting at the base of Kilimanjaro, and you look at this long, long thing, and you kind of say, Oh my God, how am I going to do this? But you start. You make a start. And each step, each step you take, you get to the base camp. Base camp on day one, you just want to die because you're so exhausted. By the time you get to base camp on day five, because that summit night, you have rekindled your spirit and your determination to get to the top. And so I want to challenge you to sit, do what I asked you to do, Determine for yourself what you want to do. Look at those mountains, physical or emotional, that you might have, and then begin to climb them.